Okay, I have a Samsung range and oven and it's been taking around 25, 30, 35 minutes in order to preheat. Um, I did a little bit of looking around online and I found that the major problem probably is the igniter. So I'm gonna show you how to replace that today. Hopefully we can get this thing to preheat in five, six, seven minutes. The first thing I had to do was I had to find the model number. Um, that wasn't too hard. You gotta look down here. Right down here, you can find the model number. So I took the model number uh, after I copied it down and I went to like uh, a website like appliancepros.com, type in the model number, search for an igniter. That will give you a part number. Once you find that part number, you can either order there from like Appliance Pros or you can take it to Amazon. I found this part for I think $24 on Amazon, which is a little bit cheaper than what you would get if you went through uh, Appliance Part Pros, um, but certainly handy. So get your model number, type it in, go to um, Amazon, get your part. Um, I've got mine right here. For my particular oven, the part is dg 94 00520A. By the way, ignore what I got going on back here. I've got another project completely separate. Things that you're going to need for this, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and you're going to need a flashlight, preferably one that's magnetic. It's really going to help out. Step one, what you're going to want to do, empty this drawer down here. Once you empty the drawer, you're going to want to remove the drawer itself. There's some tabs on the side you can squeeze in to remove the drawer. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, for this model, all I really had to do for the drawer was lift up a little bit on the drawer. I found lots of goodies under here that have been lost for years and years. So probably a next good step is to unplug um, your oven slash stove because you don't want to get electrocuted. Probably not a very high chance, but let's just be on the safe side. So I'm gonna do that next. Okay, so I took out the oven racks and if your oven's anything like mine, it's a little messy inside. That's okay. Um, next, use your Phillips head screwdriver. There's two screws in the back of this plate right here. Let's get those screws out. Put these screws somewhere where you're not going to lose them. Now you're going to lift up this panel right here. When you lift it up, it should lift up straight in the back. And I believe there's tabs in the front. I don't know, it could be re reversed. Yeah, the tabs are in the front, so lift straight up in the back. Tabs in the front. Slides out, easy peasy. Now we've got two more screws. We've got a screw right here screw right here. Piece of cake, it's got like this little heat shield type thing. We're gonna take that out next. All right, so I was having a little trouble with this screw right here is being kind of a pain in the butt tapped it with a hammer. I have an impact uh, drill so I used that on it uh, and it came right up. So um, just in case you're having trouble with the screws, a little WD-40, not much, it's flammable, a little bit goes a long way. And then uh, impact screwdriver, tap it with a hammer, makes it come up a little bit easier. This panel is the opposite. Instead of lifting from the back, you're going to lift from the front. There's two little tabs back there. And now we can see our igniter back in there. Let's take a look. So our igniter is right back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove this whole piece right here. This is where the flame comes out. 
and we got a screw back here and there will be a screw up front yes I know this is kind of dirty so we're gonna remove those screws and we should be able to lift this out a little bit and then there will be some wires in the back of the igniter which won't let us take it all the way out but let's go ahead and get started with that So if you take a look under the oven, we can see where the igniter actually um, links up. And that is this thing right here. There's like a little white clip down there. And what we'll have to do is we'll have to unclip this here and then we'll have to fish that out. And um, shouldn't be too terrible. We're just gonna wait a little bit for our WD-40 to start working up top. All right, once you have those two screws out, one of them was kind of a headache. Uh, this one right here, it was, um, it, I ended up stripping it. I had to use a Dremel, Dremel tool in order to cut like a flat head on it. Uh, but I got it out. Once you get those two screws out, um, there, there's a screw on the bottom that's kind of holding this whole piece together right here that I have my hand on. And um, you just carefully, wiggle this thing out like so and you'll see the only thing that's now connected is the white little clip that I showed you down at the bottom once we undo that white clip on the bottom we should be good to go to get this out so as I showed you before this is our white clip straight in the middle of the screen um, what we got to do is we just got to take out the tabs on either side the wings on either side pull it apart and we're ready to go just one more helpful tip here. When you are going to disconnect this, all you gotta do is squeeze right here. When you squeeze on the top there, it actually opens up, comes apart real easy. Now that we've got this whole assembly out, we just need to take these two screws out and then uh, replace them. Should be easy from here on out. All right, so here's our old igniter, here's our new igniter. Um, and you can see it looks just like the old one, same clips on the end. All we need to do is uh, match up the holes, throw in the screws, and do the reverse of what we did before. Put it all back together. Okay, I got the new igniter together. Um, all I need to do is take the cord in the back, make sure it goes down the hole. And I also need to make sure that this gets in the right spot. Remember, the there's a little screw right here that you're gonna have to tighten. Uh, make sure it kinda, it like male, females, inside like a, a little gas valve down there. So make sure that um, the male part slips into the female part here. And uh, put it all back together, tighten some screws. So here's the male, female part I was talking about. You might actually need someone to help you, but you need to make sure that that slips over top there and then this little screw you're gonna to want to put together sorry about the light so there's a little screw right there all right I just installed the screw in the back if you're like me and you stripped this screw right up here um, you're gonna to want to get stainless steel number eight three eighths of an inch screws they have a pointy end the other ones don't but I think it'll work just fine just installed the heat shield I have uh, slid it into place back there where the two little clips are. Put in the screws right back here. And now it is time for this piece, the final and last piece. And if I remember correctly, I think the screws go in the back. So I didn't time it before, but uh, I know it was over 20 minutes to get to 350, uh, 350 degrees. But now we're at 350 degrees. I timed it, five minutes and 30 seconds. That is a lot better than 20 minutes. 